I heard a Frank Zappa record called Cruisin' with Ruben and the Jets. At first, it kind of offended me. And then I read the liner notes, and it said, the present day Pachuco refuses to die. I thought, huh, how does this guy know about Pachucos? So I went and I checked him out. I went to the concert, and then I got it. Ruben and the Jets was rock theater. Just bear in mind some of the important things that you have to discuss with these people. One of them might be muffins. So I was impressed, and I decided I wanted to go backstage and congratulate him to meet him. So I walk in, and I tell him, hey, Frank, Thank you for doing doo-wop, doing all this crazy acid rock. And I said, by the way, my name is Ruben. And I used to sing a little doo-wop back in the day. And he just looks at me and says, oh, Ruben, huh? And what I love about that was not, you know, him saying to Zappa, like, you're, you're fake or you're, or you're appropriating. It was like, hey, I see that you love this and you're making this kind of tribute, um, but I'm from this culture and I, and I know these streets and I know this music and I know these people. Why don't you let me become part of that performance? And, it, and so he became really part of a, a kind of, a, I, I see it as like an extended Zappa performance that then took on a life of its own where, where his musical career took on a new chapter. When I think about Ruben Guevara's group, Ruben and the Jets, I really hear soul in there. It's rock, but it's also got like definite soul influences. It wasn't doo-wop, it was rock and roll. It was hippie doo-wop. It was kind of like um, Summer of Love doo-wop. You know, a million scarves <laughs> doo-wop, you know. Right. He represented that also that Chicano freedom, you know, that new neo-Chicano. I put a band together and started writing some songs with Frank. We had some pretty big gigs with some pretty big names like T-Rex, Three Dog Night, Doobie Brothers. We even played uh, Royal Stadium, <laughs> Kansas City, over 40,000 people. That was a trip. But there was this one club in New York, Natchez, Kansas City. And the marquee, it read, Bruce Springsteen and the East Street Band, Bob Marley and the Wailers, and Ruben and the Jets. Not bad company, man. Boom, 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 boom. boom. So Frank and I are working on the second album, and uh, we decided to call it Gonzafos. Gonzafos is uh, it's a term that it's part of Pachuco Chicano graffiti culture. And it means exempt from danger. And it was the first album cover by a major record label to feature Chicano graffiti art. The biggest art that was happening at that time was album art. So I like the album covers. <laughs> Everything about this record, I mean, obviously the songs are fantastic. You, you can really hear the, the, you know, the doo-wop influence early R&B influence. You know, the cover art is so important. Again, like positioning him in place, right? Standing underneath the sign of Soto um, against a wall where there's tags, right? So that this record becomes an additional tag. The songs become kind of sonic tags on the wall of Los Angeles. He was making decisions about how he wanted to present himself. Even though he wanted to push ahead within the music industry, uh, that takes a kind of, you know, cultural, bravery 